So for about a year, we've been talking about the presidential election out there somewhere on the horizon. You wake up this morning and you realize it's 47 days away. Less than a month from right now, we will be the first Tuesday in November and we're going to vote for a new president. This has been by far the most intense presidential election season in the lifetime of anyone watching it. But it feels like we're moving towards something even more intense. What's going to happen on Election Day and in the days following? The people who've been thinking most clearly about this on both sides are the people who've done it before, who've been involved at a high level on a presidential campaign. Steve Bannon has done that. He's one of the people who ran Donald Trump's 2016 effort. He was recently back in the news last month. He was indicted on fraud charges related to a nonprofit, a Build the Wall nonprofit he was running. He hasn't been on television since then. He hasn't given any interviews on advice of counsel. But we wanted to hear what he thinks is going to happen as we move toward November. We also wanted to ask him about the charges against him. He agreed to come on tonight, and we're happy to have him. Steve Bannon, thanks a lot for coming. So I, I want to ask hey, you thanks, first. Tucker. Thanks for having you, me. You reemerged into the national consciousness in a fairly big way uh, in August when you were arrested on fraud charges. You haven't responded uh, publicly that I'm aware of to those charges. So I want to give you a chance uh, to sum up your views on it. Well, you know, Bill Burke's my attorney. You know him. I think he's the best attorney in, in D.C. So he says, hey, you should lay off this. But look, I, I, I got to come forward. You know, uh, Attorney General Barr said it, I think, at Hillsdale the other night. This is, uh, this is headhunting of high profile uh, political targets that are associated with President Trump. It's not random that it was four years almost to the day that I took over the campaign that these, uh, this indictment came out, right? What these guys wanted to do was uh, criminalize political speech, make sure I didn't go back to the campaign. What they messed up is I was never going back to the campaign. The campaign's in great shape. You got Bill Stepien, Jason Miller, Steve Cortez, others. They're doing a great job and will deliver a victory on November 3rd for President Trump. So I have been, because of my work on war room pandemic, we were the first guys to be on the pandemic in January. We understood what your opening segment was about, Tucker. The Democratic Party has traumatized their base. They're not going to come out to vote. And so somehow they have to concoct a, some effort to steal this election because they're not going to get people to come out and vote on game day, the 3rd of November of this year. And that's what I've been I, working I, on for the last couple of months. I was, never going back, I was never going back to the campaign. And that's where these guys messed up. My platform's bigger now. My voice is bigger. I've got more resources. And all we're focused on is to make sure that the progressive so I, left... And the corporatists cannot steal, cannot steal the election from Donald Trump. I, I want to just drill down briefly because this is a complex topic, and you're going to have an sure. opportunity to respond in court. Um, but the yeah. the sort of macro charge you, is you defrauded people who sent you money to build a wall. You said you wouldn't take any of the money. The charges claim that you did. What's your response to that? I, I had my my C4 had a one. If you read the indictment, I had a one million dollar contract. OK, to kind of be the D.C. office, oversee the wall uh, construction, to, to do seminars, conferences. If you want to see it, you know, go to Vice News, go to BBC, go to the opening uh, season of, uh, of uh, Showtime's The Circus, the opening episode in the 19th season. They're traveling around the country following us on these town halls. We did town halls, conferences. We built a wall, a, a two thirds of a mile of wall up a mountain in El Paso within 100 days of starting. I was, I was a contractor and ran an advisory board that brought together the best and brightest of all the wall people. So they're not going to criminalize. They're not going to shut me down about talking about the wall. They're not going to criminalize us talking about the wall. Okay. We brought in Kobach and, and Sheriff Clark and all these guys. So that's what the indictment failed to say. But look, all that will come out in court it will, over time. It, it will. It will. And I don't... Is that they're not... The key, yeah, the key the, thing is they're not going to shut ahead. me... They want to criminalize political speech, and they're not going to shut me down. I'm more focused than ever. We're kicking off a national tour on Monday called The Plot to Steal 2020. They're not going to stop my voice in assisting President Trump and making sure that this election that he's going to win on the third is not stolen from him. Big tech is clearly taking a side in this election. They have unprecedented levels of power over what people know. Um, and I'm wondering how you think they will use that power as we approach the election specifically. 
You, you, you saw the other night, you had Dr. Yan on from, from, uh, from China, as a fact witness on the, on the weapons labs over there, and also wrote this amazing paper. What, what, what Twitter did is ripped her Twitter account down right away. They took her off Facebook when they had to replay your show that was on fire throughout the world. And, but they allowed the Chinese Communist Party to beat down on her every second with all of their running dogs. That's what you're going to see. That's a preamble to what's going to happen on November 3rd. They're talking about it. They're already saying, both Facebook and Twitter, that they're not going to announce a winner. Here's what's going to happen. Donald J. Trump is going to win the vote on the only day that matters. That's November 3rd. He's going to win the real election in the way we've done it, with secret ballots, with people going into a, a booth and voting for president of the United States. Okay? By that evening, he will be the winner. And what they're going to do is that between the lawfare they've got with 800 attorneys under Eric Holder, the mob they've got with Antifa and the radical elements of Black Lives Matter, but most importantly, the digital muscle of Facebook and Twitter, they're going to sit there and they're going to not declare Trump the winner. You were right there running the campaign four years ago today. Looking at the poll numbers now as objectively as you can, as compared to the numbers you were looking at four years ago today, how do you think the president's reelect looks? I think the president, I think the team's done a great job. When I look at these numbers in the, in the cross tabs, when I drill down on them, I think the president's got a, not just a great shot, I think he will be the winner on November 3rd. I think the, the, I think the campaign's totally focused. I think Biden is a cipher. He can't draw a crowd. So I think, I think right now that I think the campaign's doing great, the president's doing great. I see a victory on November 3rd. And I was the first guy to tell me he was going to win back in August of 16. Huh. And then maybe the real contest begins. Steve Bannon, I'm glad that you came on. Thank you that's very when, much. That's when the war starts. I, I, Thanks, I'm beginning to th I'm beginning to think that's true. Um, appreciate it. Thank you.